Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 293 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. The comedy festival starts next week on Wednesday. Loosespears.com, get your tickets now. I want to see you there. Opening night, almost sold out, as well as Friday and Saturday. The other shows are like over half full and get your tickets now, okay? Look, uh, I think that, here, I got a hot take on TikTok. I don't think it should be banned, okay? I don't think it should be banned. And I think that, this entire move to ban TikTok is uh, completely fucking corrupt and is just due to lobbying by Meta, all right? TikTok's biggest mistake is is not, uh, you know, their data privacy or being owned by a Chinese company or any number of, of these things they're being accused of, child safety, uh, the algorithm causing ADHD in children uh, and, uh, you know, screen time for kids and, and the influence that it might be having on children and all of these other, you know, reasons that are being said. The, that's not their biggest mistake. Their biggest mistake is not lobbying Democrats and Republicans, because that's what Meta did, okay? Meta, here's the thing. Meta, obviously, we know very recently, put fucking billions and billions and billions of dollars going from Facebook into Meta to build the Metaverse. And what happened? No one fucking wanted it because the technology isn't there yet, all right? They did it too early. The Metaverse will be a huge thing, but right now... All of the investors are go- and the shareholders are going, yeah, cool. So where where is this metaverse? Who's using it? How how do we make money from it? And the answer is, it's not it's not there. It's not there yet. Right now, the metaverse is in our palms, not in our fucking eyes. Okay, there's no helmet you can put on that puts that that makes your 60 year old grandfather want to go in there yet. And that's that's the real play. That's the real money play. Is what. What technology can I create or improve or buy that will capture people aged 13 to 60? Right now, that's whatever we're looking at on our phones. It's not the metaverse yet. It will be, but it's not yet. So Facebook have had to do this big pivot of like, fuck, the metaverse actually isn't this thing that was going to take off immediately. NFTs have blown up. The metaverse isn't working. It's it's going to be crazy profitable for us in 10, 20, 50 years maybe, but right now we need cash. So they fired fucking everybody. All right, all of those people they hired to help build the metaverse, they're all losing their fucking job now, all right? And they're going, shit, we need to make money. And But not only do we need to make money, we're actually losing money on the shit that used to make us money. Facebook is dead in the fucking water in, in, in demographics that matter, all right? Which is basically just Westerners aged 13 and up. None of them have Facebook. A lot of them don't even have Instagram, so, all right? So the big fucking thing that they bought that saved them when Facebook was dying is dying. And and the thing that's killing both of them is TikTok and they can't buy it because they can't afford it. And also TikTok doesn't want to sell because it's incredibly successful. So they're fucked. So what they've decided to do is, is instead of building a product that's better than TikTok, which they could maybe do, but probably not, Right? They've instead gone, okay, well, instead of competing with TikTok, we can and, and hiring all these people to build all of these things and make something that's tr- that's truly makes all of the regular people go, oh, I want to use that, right? Like everyone did moving from Facebook to Instagram, from Instagram to TikTok. They've instead had to go, all right, well, how about instead of competing fairly, we'll take all of this money, right? And we'll spend half of it lobbying politicians to get TikTok banned. Because what's easier than winning the game when the game costs billions of dollars, years of time, uh, hundreds or thousands of employees and contractors to be paid billions of millions of dollars, right? What's easier than that? Taking half of that money and fucking paying off politicians to start going, hang on a minute. TikTok's owned by the Chinese government. What about data privacy? You guys don't care about data privacy because that's been a fucking issue Ever since Facebook was invented, even before that, and you guys have done nothing. What about Cambridge Analytica? What about every single time there's been a giant data leak? I mean, for fuck's sake, didn't fucking my uh, my insurance company just got hacked because they weren't looking after their data properly? Optus just gave my fucking birth certificate and my passport and my and my fucking all my ID numbers and everything to some hacker. 
because they stored it incorrectly because they, they probably didn't have fucking laws that were, that were telling them how to store it. All right, data privacy is not the fucking issue, all right? And yes, it being owned by a Chinese company is a concern, all right? But what are you going to do? Are you going to ban every single digital company that has any kind of Chinese ownership? Bam, 10 cent. That's fucking half the video games that you play gone. Fortnite, gone. How many how many operating systems of machines or computers or programs or software? How many how many things and digital things are we going to lose if we make Chinese involvement the metric for whether or not we should ban it? All right, we're going to lose fucking everything. And also, it's not like fucking America isn't doing the exact same thing to every single Chinese fucking citizen anyway. All right? Everyone's surveilling everyone. And if we're being real, it probably doesn't even... Let's put it... Let's make it illegal to start an app in the Western world if, if you're Chinese. All right? Let's just do that. Every single app made, made, by a, made by a Chinese guy called Wen, it's banned. Let's do that, okay? Do you think that that's going to stop the Chinese government from finding shit out and just getting access to the data anyway. They're already doing it, okay? And if you're so concerned about fucking TikTok's data and all this kind of bullshit going over to, to ByteDance, because ByteDance owns Du Yin, who owns TikTok, all right? I like the CEO's plan. The CEO, all right, who unfortunately... All right, unfortunately for the optics of the situation. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say, unfortunately, he's Asian, all right, in a racist way. I'm going to say, unfortunately, he is Asian in an optics way, all right? This, it, and and it, it just doesn't help TikTok situation, okay? In this case, if TikTok was smart, they... they they probably should have racially discriminated against this guy because to protect TikTok from racism. They had to they had to use racism for good. Unfortunately, they hired a Singaporean man to be the CEO of TikTok and every fucking racist dude who hates China and the Chinese government, or they look at him and they hear his accent and they go, why is this goddamn card-carrying member of the Chinese Communist Party talking to Congress, running TikTok? He's Singaporean. And that's fine, all right? It's fine that he's Asian, but it's also bad that he's Asian from an optics perspective. And I mean that in the least racist way possible. It just doesn't help their... Case. You know, that would be like me, okay, if, 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 if an organization was accused of being a far-right, racist, neo-Nazi organization, that would be like sending me there to go, don't worry, right, with my fucking slick back hair, my pale skin, my silver skull jewelry, and a leather jacket going, no, 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 in my fucking leather boots, no, 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 no. We're not skin. We're not neo Nazis. That's uh, people will be like, all right, but you, but you, you, you understand? You really look like that. <laughs> and if I also had like a had a southern accent, no, 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 we ain't no Nazis. You know, and and my name was like fucking Herman Goering, just coincidentally. It just doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't mean anything because he's Singaporean. He's not Chinese. He has no involvement with the fucking Chinese government. I'm just saying it's it's not good for optics, for them. God bless him. I'm sure he does a good job. I think he handled himself. Dude, the TikTok CEO handled himself in that hearing a lot better than I would have. Because I don't think I could, I could contain myself if I was in that hearing. Some guy, all right, some politician who, by the way, owns shares in Meta, right, goes to him, serious question. Uh, so when you open uh, the TikTok app, does it connect to my Wi-Fi network in my home? And the CEO goes, God bless him, says, um, well, every, every internet connected device, if you connect it to your Wi-Fi, if you're using an app that needs internet to work, 
will connect to him. And he goes, uh, yes or no? Does TikTok connect to my Wi-Fi network? And the guy was trying to say, yes, but that's normal and not in any way a bad thing because that's what the internet is. And he starts to go, yeah. And the guy goes, so you're saying that when I open TikTok on my phone, it'll connect to the internet and it'll have a look at high resolution photos of my balls and then post that so that my children can see? Yes or no? (laughs) And the guy goes, no. Oh, so you're saying that they'll get a picture of my dick instead. Is that what you're saying? The CEO was so patient with those fucking boomers. Why don't any of those old as fuck, technologically irrelevant politicians have just one staffer, one assistant under the age of 40? Have a look at the questions they're going to ask. Just so they can go, look, I understand the spirit of your questioning, sir, but you sound like a fucking idiot. Do you even have a phone? Yeah, I got a phone. I got a Nokia right here. The buttons fell off. I got to use a matchstick to press the buttons. You know, thank God I'm not the CEO of TikTok or any tech firm getting questioned by Congress because I would just fucking blow my top. Uh, Can you confirm to me that if uh, I want to use TikTok... Uh, I have to, it, it'll connect to my home. Wi- yes, that's how the fucking internet works, you fat boomer. Also, I'm not Chinese, I'm from Singapore. I would answer his question by going, hey man, how much money do you have invested in Meta? Also, did they lobby you to ask these questions? Because you didn't seem to give a fuck about TikTok until six months ago when Meta had to fire everybody and had to have a shareholders meeting about, about a disastrous loss in revenue and user base. It seems suspiciously convenient that that's when you decided to care about TikTok when you can't even tell me how Wi-Fi works. You old, crusted, melting fuck. Here's the thing. I put out, I put out a post and I said, I think that banning TikTok will have an unbelievably negative effect on small businesses and young people's ability to make it from zero, like become who they want to be from nothing, okay? Because look, I I blew up on Facebook, all right? In 2012, that's where I cut my teeth and that's where I fucking exploded and got this giant audience. And and I have, it's been my career since, 2014, I think I quit my job and I haven't gone back since. And it's been ups and downs, but thank God it's been mostly ups. All right, we're in a big down right now, but I'm I'm feel I'm I'm feeling an up coming soon. Okay, God, dear God, buy tickets, loosebiz.com. Uh, I need an up. It's it's been a it's been a long down period. I'm not going to fucking lie. Um, but I think that that my experience starting from zero on Facebook, right? Even when I went solo is is similar but not as good as the experience people are having right now coming from zero on TikTok, all right? Because TikTok has managed to do something that none of the other apps are willing to do because they could do it, but they're not willing. TikTok did something amazing, insane, incomprehensible. They said, what if we looked at each individual content as an individual piece so that if a guy who normally posts about what he had for lunch puts up a post about a book that other people like from a genre that they like, they'll see that thing. And then instead of looking at it as this thing that we should leech as much money from the poster, we just look at it as as this thing of like good content gets seen by the right people instead of everyone who, and, and, and it pisses off half the people. All right organic reach, they call it. Because Facebook, Instagram, to an extent, YouTube, YouTube is a little bit different. YouTube's a lot harder, all right? But you can blow up just by being good, basically. But it's a lot harder to start from zero, especially now, right? Facebook, Instagram, right? All the other previous big hitters, Twitter, all right? Their whole thing is like, if you want to get seen by a big audience, you have to pay us money, all right? So that you know, it's a little bit different for entertainers, content creators, but if you're a bookstore, right? The amount of fucking bookstores, independent little bookstores I've seen 
uh, that have gone from like, you know, barely paying the bills to employing like a fucking 18 year old to post book reviews and going on to this giant, insanely successful, you know, crazy thing is wild. And this is true of like hairstylists, any fucking small subcontractor, any type of person who does a thing that normally they would have to give a thousand dollars a month to Facebook to go, oh, show everyone how good I am at, at making acrylic nails or, or cutting hair or painting or taking photos or filming or whatever the fuck that you actually do. All right, all these people instead can just fucking put their shit on TikTok and it gets delivered to the right people and they're making money and achieving their dreams and being more creative. Artists, musicians, comedians, fucking, you look at what Luke Kidgel's done. You look at what TikTok has done for me, like just from posting short clips that previously, you know, I was filming all of my shows since uh, uh, like no slide season, I think is when I first started filming all of my shows. And I had, I had all these clips, but I didn't have anywhere to post them because they would be 30 seconds. They'd be 45 seconds. They'd be 15 seconds. They'd be two minutes. I could put it on YouTube, but it wouldn't go that well because YouTube wants 10 minute things, right? Because they make more money from that. All of a sudden, TikTok comes along and now I post a clip and I'm selling tickets because it goes to the people that want to see it, right? Uh, and I think that banning something like that is going to have an unbelievably widespread negative effect on small business across the globe, all right? And I think that big business is going to fucking love that. Because instead of opening up your fucking TikTok feed and find and, and just randomly seeing a, a fucking dog groomer that does a really good job in your local area that makes some cool videos and then you book a thing with them, it's just going to go to like fucking Jim's dog grooming or whatever corporate fucking giant monopoly in your area can afford to hire someone to make social media ads and then also a budget to pump into shit. The amount of dreams that I've seen realized in real time on TikTok is fucking insane. And I've never seen that with any other social media app. And I think to ban it is incredibly short-sighted. And also it's so clearly manipulated by uh, other corporate interests. Like half those fucking politicians in the congressional hearing own shares in Meta or are being lobbied by Meta. All right, Meta is literally paying these people to kill their competition because they can't create a better product. And all these fucking politicians that are saying, and all these people that go, oh, what about data privacy? What about data security? Change the fucking laws then. Change the laws. Enforce companies to do certain things that protect data. Because at the end of the day, if they don't protect data, it's going to get to whoever, whatever malicious actors want to get to it because you're not bringing in laws to protect people. I, I put up a post and someone's like, oh, yeah, TikTok is fucking giving children ADHD anyway. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, every single other app is trying to replicate TikTok's algorithm. So if that's the problem that you're worried about, banning this app is just going to make all of those kids get hooked on another fucking app that manages to replicate it as well or better. And then you have the same problem, but it's fine because it's owned by a fucking American company. Change the laws. If you don't want kids racking up 10 hours of screen time every fucking day, which they shouldn't be able to, you need to change the law. I don't think any, any fucking kid under the age of 16 should be allowed to browse social media apps for 10 hours a day. And people go, oh, that's the parent's job. All right, it's been the parent's job for fucking five years now. They can't do it. It's impossible. You look at all these fucking, how many 40, 50, 39 year old parents, all right, know how to effectively use social media, let alone how to fucking operate a phone well enough or better than their 13 year old child. None of them. It's impossible. You know, and people go, oh, it's the parents' responsibility to stop kids from doing things that are bad for them. Okay, cool. Well, go and send your kid to buy cigarettes. Can they do it? No. Go and take your kid to a fucking strip club. Can you get in? No. There are laws to protect children, and I don't think a child should be allowed to rack up fucking 10 hours on social media. There should be a fucking limit. There should be a law that go, a child is allowed to watch this many hours or engage with social media for this many hours a day or a week, or whatever the experts say is healthy, and 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 you will see such a positive effect in kids everywhere, all right? Because it, ultimately, it is impossible to limit social media time, screen time, and we know that it's giving these kids fucking, you know, brain worms and, so, and, and suicidality and depression and anxiety and all this kind of bullshit and self-image problems and all this kind of shit that all these politicians pretend to care about 
But really, they're just trying to kill a business that is uh, doing Meta's job a lot better. And that's the real problem. And if you're worried about China getting access to data security, okay, cool. Make it a law that, all right, yes, uh, you can have con uh, companies or digital data companies or whatever the fuck, digital-based companies that handle data owned by foreign companies, but all of American data needs to be stored on American soil by a third party that has to approve any data getting sent out of the country. Bang. Problem solved. That probably should be a law already. How much fucking data that already, before TikTok, was getting sent off to dictatorships or spies or anything like that? You know, once a company reaches a certain size, if you want to have access to American companies, you've got to keep your data onshore. But they don't want to do that. Because that's not what they're really worried about. What they're really worried about, what they're really upset about, is that a foreign company has managed to do Facebook and Meta's job better than them. Better than them. They've created a better product. And all these people get, all these people who don't have TikTok go, oh, TikTok's just dancing. TikTok's just mindless shit. The amount of shit that I have learned on TikTok or come into contact with that has improved my life drastically is unlike any other fucking app ever, all right? I've learned about philosophy that is actively changing my life. I've learned recipes. I've learned hobbies. I've learned about small businesses that I never would have found on any other social media platform that have been delivered straight to my feed that are in my local area that look good that I have then gone and spent money at. You cannot fucking replicate that. And also the other social media platforms do not want to replicate that. Because what they would much prefer than me naturally finding a business and spending my money at a locally owned, independently owned Australian business that looks cool that I would that I would love to go to, what they would rather me than me finding out about that because they posted about it, they would much rather some giant fucking mega corporation that's owned by an American business. They would much rather that company pay Facebook and Meta a, a million dollars a year to market ads to me, and instead of buying the fucking book that I want to buy from my local independently owned Australian small business, they would much rather be just go, oh, get it from Amazon. I don't think that this is, I think that the security issue is absolutely uh, a concern, but I think that the actual way to solve that is to change the fucking laws about how data is handled. Because what you're gonna get, we live in a global world, obviously, okay? All of our fucking manufacturing is made outside of our country now. We don't have any handle on it, all right? We don't. So also, a lot of our technology is going to move that way. The physical things that we use, but also the digital things that we use every day. What, you're going to stop something that would, that would create a net economic and lifestyle benefit for the entire fucking world because it came from the wrong brain? In the, in, the, in the wrong geographic location because you don't trust the government of the guy that invented it? Fair concern, so change the law. Yes, you know, you can have a fucking business that's, that's an idea come up with by a Chinese guy. But if you want to run it in America or in Australia, you need to keep the data onshore with a third party that's, that, that only Australian citizens or American citizens that were born in America are, are allowed to work at and allowed to operate. And they're a third party that you pay. They're a contractor. Maybe they handle lots of different data centers for lots of different businesses. Maybe they're owned by the fucking American government themselves. Think about that. Then the American government could make even more money out of fucking TikTok. They could go, okay, you guys can operate here, but we own the data. It's ours and we're going to protect it. And we're going to make sure that American data is handled by us. Is that not a better system than just fucking banning an innovative technology? And if you don't like TikTok as an app, you're not allowed to have an opinion. Because that's what I kept saying is, oh, TikTok sucks anyway. All right, Mark, 45, Facebook, shut the fuck up. All right, this isn't about whether or not the app is good. This is about the, the general discussion around data protection, isn't it? Isn't that what you're worried about? I don't know. Am I wrong? Let me know. To me, banning TikTok because it's owned by a Chinese thing, absolutely, it's a concern, okay? But to me, banning it doesn't solve the problem because... I mean, I don't know this, but I would speculate that there are there are a fuckload of Chinese-owned 
businesses that create software that are integral to the function of businesses worldwide or are integral parts of the economy worldwide. So if you're if your criteria for banning something is it's a Chinese owned thing that handles data, how much technology are we going to lose here? I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about China creating a much better product and it's a valid concern. So change the law. Don't just fucking ban something because something else will get created. Anyway, that, that, that's my, that's my thoughts. If you think I'm wrong, I would, I would love to know your thoughts, but to me, this just seems like a fucking band aid fix ban TikTok. Okay. Cool. Now we now we what what we go back to Instagram and Facebook where data leaks aren't a concern and no violent shit speech ever gets posted and and children have never had a history of body image or anxiety on all these conversations they're they're, they're the exact same conversations but they were happening about fucking Instagram and Facebook so ban those two. I don't think that's what it is. If you're really concerned about kids, data privacy, all of that, change the fucking laws. Don't put a Band-Aid fix on banning something that just so happens to be uh, the comp- the biggest competitor that is currently beating one of your lobbyists and someone that you also have shares in. It's fucking insane. Anyway, loosebeers.com, grab your tickets. Oh, I wanted to celebrate something. Uh, we just hit, we just passed 400 Patreon supporters. Thank you very much to everyone who's been jumping on. My goal this year is 500 Patreon supporters. I would love to hit that, hit that. If we could hit that number, that will take me through my surgery. Times are obviously very tough. I don't have a team anymore. A giant portion of my income has been wiped out because I'm just not well enough to do stand up and YouTube at the same time. I'm doing stand up now when the festival ends. I can't tour because I got this surgery, uh, but I am going to get back into YouTube. So hopefully money will pick up there, but then I'm going to lose the stand up. I just can't do everything at once. So, so for me to be able to continue doing the podcast, the Patreon version of the podcast, uh, and then the, sh- the stand up clips and whatever I'm, I'm, I'm physically well enough to do on YouTube. Patreon is the way uh, that that we pay for everything because honestly, that's the only regular money in my life right now. The the tickets will obviously stop after the festival, and that's amazing. But that money has to last me the entire year. Pay for my surgery, pay for the time when I can't make anything, uh, and 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 Patreon is basically my my lifeline at the moment. It's it's a low period for for Spears. Okay, remember when I was broke? Well, we're back there, baby. <laughs> um. Uh, and and I and I, yeah, I just I am I'm so 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 grateful and and so thankful to to everyone uh, who's been jumping on Patreon recently. The the support has been amazing. The Discord is popping off. Everyone's been really nice and and uh, and it's it's really cool to just see that level of support because I was super nervous about. I mean, this is why I didn't prioritize my my health because I was like, well, fuck, if I stop doing stuff, I'm going to stop making money, and then things are going to get even worse because not only will I still be sick. I'll also have no, I won't be able to afford my surgery and stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, Patreon picking up and, and, and people coming to shows is, is, uh, is so, so, so amazing, especially at a time when I'm, I'm kind of making less than, than I have for a long time. And that's why it's so important to me that I, that I do this podcast every single Sunday. Um, and as well as the Patreon podcast and, and clips and just whatever, whatever I can do, um, and, and if, if all I can do that week is the podcast, that's all I'm going to do, uh, that week. And, and it's, you know, it's Patreon that's, that's keeping me going through all of this. And I really, I really appreciate having 400 patrons is so amazing. And I'm so, uh, blessed and grateful and thankful. Thank you very much. Um, it's looking like 500, uh, might be possible. And that would be huge. That would be amazing. Thank you. Um, the, they keep raising the interest rates on my mortgage. It's really scary. <laughs> For the fuck! And, and with the way the property market's going, if I lose this one, it's it, it, that's it. And I'm, ne- I'm never going to be like, oh, well, if I work really hard, it, that's it. It's never going to happen again. The stars align, and I hope they don't unalign. Um, all right, what did I want to talk about? I've been going to the library a lot. I've been going to the library uh, heaps, actually. Dude, the, dude, the library... Fucking slaps. All right. I used to love the library when I was, when I was nine, 
when I was eight, my grandma would take me to the library and we'd pick out books and she'd return them and and I thought it was so fun. And then and then and then and then fucking twenty years went by and I was like, I haven't been to the library for for that long. So I went, I started going, and dude, I signed up. I'm a fucking member, my local library. I go all the time now. I and you know I you know what I go there? I don't go there to borrow books. Okay. I don't go there uh, to shower, although they have those facilities for the homeless. How lovely. Uh, maybe I'll take them up on it. I'll bring my sandals. I go there to write. I go there. I leave my fucking phone at home. I take my notepad. I just sit at one of the desks and I write. And it's, it's amazing because I don't, I work from home. So I don't really like writing at home. I just can't, I can't get into the writing mode because I'll be here. My phone's here. My girl's here. The dogs are there. There's other shit going on. There's TV. There's so many things. And also it's boring. I've been here all day. I sleep here. I wake up here. I work here. I can't, it's not inspiring. I need to leave my house. I've been going to the library and it's amazing, dude. It's so good. Any creatives? I see a lot of people that, that go there and they're producing music. They're just fucking vibe with their fucking headphones on. Uh, it's great. Homeless people using the internet. Old, old men who go in there for a lesson from, from the library ladies. How do I look up a music video on the internet? <laughs> it's lovely. It's amazing. Why is China trying to access my Wi-Fi network? You know, kids get fucking lessons, reading lessons and, um, and drag queens come in and they're completely naked and they give all the toddlers lap dances. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, that, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Not in my library. I wouldn't stand for it. Um, but yeah, man, I've been going to the library and, and it's been, it's been amazing. I've been writing my show. I've been improving my show. I've been just going there to just work on ideas and stuff. I've been going there just to get out of the house and, and, and work in a different location. It's free. It doesn't cost any fucking money. I don't have to pay to be there because I go to cafes a lot. I love going to cafes, but the, you can't sit there all day. Do you know what I mean? Like you, the, you can't even really sit there for more than a couple of hours, even if you're buying a lot of food, because at some point, you know, you, you, you know, it's, you can't do that every day. It's expensive. You know, I'll go to the cafe once a day. I buy coffee, right? And that's all I do. And I, and I can justify that doing that every day. Sometimes I'll get two coffees if I'm there for a while. And I justify doing that every day because uh, I, I don't drink, all right? So I'm, I'm, it balances out in the wash, all right? So I can do that. Uh, but uh, you can't, you know, if I want to spend four or five hours trying to work out a fucking joke or, or work out the sequence of my show or anything, which is, by the way, looking looking to be quite good, uh, you can't do that at a, at a, at any business, really. Um, so go to, jo join your library. You know, uh, when when I first came up with the idea, I was like, ah, the library. I don't know where I got the fucking library, but you, it's beautiful. It's quiet. It's nice. It's good. No one bothers you. Everyone's walking around. It's kind of it's a cool atmosphere to be in. You're like surrounded by books and knowledge and. You know, I, I get I get bored or, I, or I'm having trouble nutting out a joke, so I'll just walk around and I'll pick something up off the shelves and I'll flick through a couple pages. You know, the other day uh, I was I was thinking about the future in the library and I was like, oh, who are some like ses successful comedians that started in Australia or New Zealand and ended up like making it, making it? And uh, I was like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll check the biography section. And I found this book by Ursula Carlson. And I literally flicked to the chapter of like, how did she do it? And I got so inspired. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Amazing. Check out your local library. It's really good. However, the other day I went to the library and, uh, and look, lots of people like to go there and work and that's great. Okay. But can we talk about acceptable work in a library? Okay. Me writing. Beautiful. That's, that's almost the most acceptable form. I'm writing pen and paper. That's probably the most acceptable form. The, the only way you can get more acceptable is if I was writing a book. That's even better. But unfortunately, I'm writing a, about my dick. And there's, there's also some fart jokes in there and also and also uh, a, a lot about my dog's pussy. All right? But you'll have to come and see the show if you want to see it. There's, and actually, there's also there's also some horrendous, probably some of the, the, the <laughs> probably one of the darkest things I've ever written down. I wrote it down and if I went, oh, <laughs> But that's in there. But a lot, but, they, but yeah, there's also a lot of silly, silly stuff about toots and farts. 
Something for everyone. Loosebiz.com. Right, that's acceptable. Okay. Um, music producing. As long as your headphones aren't too loud. Very acceptable. Um, maybe editing, right? Or website designing or anything, anything on a computer. Okay. That's acceptable work. But um, the other day I was there and, and the, the cunt sitting behind me was doing some very unacceptable work. What was he doing? Was he, was he, uh, was he personal training? No, that's ridiculous. Was he um, singing? No, he was doing fucking call center work at the fucking library. This cunt sitting behind me for two hours on the fucking phone going, hello, welcome to this. Can I help you? And doing tech support over the fucking phone. Bro, I wanted to stand up, flip my table and then throw it at him and cause a fucking scene. But I didn't want to disrupt the drag show that was happening for the kids. For fucking two hours, this cunt was going, hello, how can I help you? And no one said anything. So, and, and I should have said something, but now, but I didn't, but I was like, what if he's homeless? What do you mean? What if he's homeless? The cunt works at a fucking call center. Fucking unbelievably enraging. Sorry, I was just imagining what I what I would do to him if if, if I lived in a world of with no consequences. You ever you ever think about that? Like just having like a, you just have violent imagery in your head. I don't want to say too much. I'll get myself banned from banned from the library, but, but ban him. Um. Anyway, right. Let's answer some emails. I can't believe I yelled about TikTok from uh, for th fucking 30 minutes, but I'm, but I'm undeniably right. But I would also like to know your thoughts. Um, okay, we've got this email. Uh, my girlfriend keeps suggesting a threesome, but I don't know what to do because I'm insecure about it. Okay, interesting. Uh, email the show, podcast at lewspears.com, L-E-W-spears.com. Uh, if you need some life advice, if you have a funny story you want to tell me, if you want my thoughts on something, if you have just anything that you think would be of value to the show, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. A news article, a video, anything. Hi, Lewis. My girlfriend, 23, and I, 21, have been together for a year just last week. Anyway, um, just last week, this, dude, this, this sounds amazing. This dude's like living the dream. Just last night, she kept hinting that she would like to try a threesome. Nice. With one of her friends. Nice. He's a bloke. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know how to react because I know my girlfriend has had a lot of partners in the past and it has made me very insecure about the whole subject because I know she has had a few in the past, but, but I haven't. Um, I don't even, yeah. I don't even know if they are hints in the first place, but if they are, how should I bring it up with her? Thanks for helping a young lad. Yeah, look, bro, I don't like this. I'm not a fan, okay? Because here's the thing, all right? The threesome discussion, okay, can be can be a great a great discussion to have, okay? Um, I'm not I'm not so much a fan myself of the of the male male female. Not my cup of tea, but you know, each to each their own. Um, but here's my red flag, okay? Here's here's like a, here's like a positive way. To bring up a threesome. Have you ever thought about a threesome? Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. Talking about, oh, wow, this is a little bit naughty, right? That's a that's a that's a positive way. And then a lot of discussion and then and then months of discussion and then or maybe years of discussion. And then maybe one day you go, well, let's try it. And then you start looking for a potential suitor to add. All right. After you've discussed your boundaries and your rule, that's like a healthy, here's an unhealthy way to do it. I really want to fuck my friend Brad. Do you want to be there? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it sounds like to me is, is to, to me, the red flag there is I really want to fuck my friend. You should, you should come too. Do you see what I mean? I feel it's different. It's not, it's not like you've been, musing with the idea of of a threesome for months or weeks or years and then the opportunity presented itself because you met someone or you found someone or you downloaded an app and you started looking it's it's the her having the idea that she wants to fuck her mate that i don't know she, how long she's been friends with him right but she wants to fuck her mate and then she goes oh well now we should have because it sounds like to me which so if i'm her it goes fuck I really want to fuck Brad. Oh, 
but I've got a boyfriend. Oh, well, I don't want to break up with my boyfriend, but I really want to fuck Brad, but but I love my boyfriend. But, oh, well, oh, well maybe, maybe we I could just, Brad, you know, Brad could, I could fuck Brad and my boyfriend can be there and, and then it's and then it's fine and then my boyfriend's also having fun. Do you see how that's, it's a, it seems, and this is very, you haven't given me very much detail, but it seems that face value, the red flag there being, seems like she wants to fuck this dude, but she doesn't want to break up with you, which is just like, you know, an, uh, an unhealthy way to do things. I would be suspicious of this guy. I would be like, well, why is the first time, because that's, that's the thing, right? If I want to have a threesome, right? And I go, oh, jazz. My friend Sarah, that I've been friends with for a while, is so fucking hot. I really want to fuck her. Do you want to be there? <laughs> it's about me wanting to fuck her more than it is about me wanting to have a, a, a fun experience with my girlfriend. Do you see the difference? I don't like the difference. I'm also inferring a lot, so I don't know. You haven't given me too much information, but it sounds like to me that she just... Just last night, she kept hinting she would like to try a threesome with one of her friends. See, that's it. That's not. That's not trying a threesome. Do you get what I mean? That's her wanting to fuck this guy while you're there. It's different, you know. It's not her going. Oh, I've got. I've got a crazy fantasy. I don't know if you would be into it. Oh, I really want to do this. And then you also going. Oh, that sounds fun. And then. Talking about the theoretical idea, it's it's jumping straight to the actual practical, and the practical is I want to fuck this guy. You should come, literally. You know, you need to ask yourself. Firstly, let's take out all people. All right, you don't even have a girlfriend. Is that is is you having a like fucking a girl with another guy? Is that something that you would want to do if you were single? And the opportunity, or like if you were at a party and, and this couple walked up to you and were like, oh, do you want to fuck my girlfriend with me? And you were into the girl. Is that something that you would want to do? If it's not, I don't know if that's something that you would ever, do you know what I mean? Like if you have a thing that you're into, if, you, if you're into feet, all right, it's usually before your girlfriend even enters your life, that's something that you're into. It's pretty rare for you to, get with someone and then go, fuck, I didn't know that I liked that. That does sometimes happen, but it's pretty, it's not as common, especially with the threesome thing. Everybody knows what a threesome is and everyone has an idea of whether they would like to do that. And then it's like, well, would I want to do that with my partner or would I rather do that with like a, with people that are acquaintances? I don't like this. Uh, it's re I'm, I'm getting red flagged for this one. It seems like it's more about fucking this dude than having an experience for the two of you and then someone else is also involved. I would not, if you're going to do a threesome, you can't do it with someone that that one of the people is going to see a lot afterwards without the other. I don't think that's, I don't think that's, uh, that's good or healthy or the way to do it. Do you know what I mean? Although I've never, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. That's, that's my thoughts. Any, any people uh, in the comment section who ha who've done it, good experience or bad experience, let, let uh, this, this fella know. I don't like it. But my other advice is, uh, is I would go, uh, you, yeah, the, the, the decision of whether or not to do something sexually is, is never will one person like it? You know, that's not your role as a boyfriend or a girlfriend to be like, oh, well, well, she likes it or he likes it. So I'm going to deal with it. It has to be mutual on some level that you can try stuff, but there has to be at least a small part of you that wants to do it because otherwise it's just going to be a bad experience. So you need to ask yourself, is this something that I would do, you know, in, in my, if I were single or is this something that I want to do with, with her? Because that's the thing, you know, this, this man's going to fuck your girl. If you say yes, and you're going to have to see that. Think about that, that even no matter how much participation you're having, this dude's going to fuck your girl and you're going to see that. And that's going to be in your brain forever. That mental image and that, and it'll pop up when you're doing the dishes It'll pop up when, when when you're talking about tennis 
and 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 you turn on the doubles, your brain will associate and, and you'll hear doubles and team and you'll just go right back to that memory of, of this dude fucking your girl. And if that's not something that makes you go, ooh, <laughs> it's probably not what you want to, you know, if that makes you go, uh, 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 you know, it's not, if you think of it, like really think about that. And if it makes you go, uh, in your brain a little bit, don't do it. If it, if it makes you go, ooh, or mmm, or oh, then yeah, maybe. But instinctively, like no words, it's it's a feeling. If it makes you go, ah, it's not for you. And that goes for, you know, guys, girls, whatever, whatever thing that you want to do in the bedroom, you should really get down to the feeling of it no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's hand-holding or kissing, all right? If you ask yourself, am I ready for this? And 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 if you think about, if you picture it in your mind, if it makes you go, ah, it's not for you. But if it makes you go, ooh, or yeah, in this, you know, maybe. So I don't like this. Um, how should I bring it up with her? How you should bring it up is uh, you just go, hey, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this threesome thing. Um, why do you want to do it? You know, why? Tell me why. And not in an accusatory way, in an open and honest way. Like, why do you want to do this threesome? Uh, and, and I would just honestly ask you, like, why, why do you want to do it with this guy? Have you talked about it with this guy? Because that's another thing. If she's already talked about it with this guy, I mean, that's not, that's, I think that's kind of, that's not good, you know? Like if she's going out and and organizing to fuck this dude and then going, okay, just let me check with my boyfriend first and then going to you, horrible execution. Almost like breakup worthy, you know? That's like not good at all. Because that's not how it should be done. It should be, here's the idea as a concept, as a fantasy, that sounds fun. No people are involved at all. Just the idea of it. Act it out. Talk about it. Ex work out the logistics. Okay, yes, it's something that both of us are as excited as the other to partake in. And then going, well, maybe should we look for someone else? Should we put feelers out? Should we, how should we do it? Should you find someone? Should I find someone? Should we both together find, you know, If someone comes to you and goes, hey, I really want to fuck this guy. Do you want to be there? I don't like it. It's not the way to do it. Um, so, yeah, the, the, I mean, the only way to bring it up is to, is to have, like, have the conversation. Like, ask me all these questions. Ask her all these questions that you asked me. You know, hey, what's going on here? Do I have to worry about this person? Uh, why? Like, is, is it about the idea or is it about this person? Because, and, and also, you need to ask yourself, is this something that I would is this something that I would do because I want to, or am I only considering it because I love her? That's another thing. Cause there are certain things that you do for your partner just because you love them that you don't want to do. But those things are like going to a baby shower. <laughs> you know, it's not like letting her get fucked by some other dude. Even though you're not into it. If that's what you into, you know, whatever. But if you're not, it's, you know, Sacrificing for your partner is like doing the dishes when they're sick, even though it's their job. You know, even though even though you're you're the guy that vacuums the floor and they do the dishwasher, if they're sick, you know, you go, oh, well, I'll vacuum the floor and do the dishwasher. That's like doing something for your partner, even though you don't want to do it. Not letting some other dude rail her. <laughs> That's my advice. Just send me an update. Has, has anyone had any ex threesome experiences? Send it through to the podcast. Any advice? Any personal stories? Uh, any um, any propositions? Send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, we got one more email here. Uh, what do we have here? Um, oh, we got this one from a girl. Um, I don't know if my partner enjoys sex with me or not. Oh, these, you guys are a sexually frustrated bunch. And I'm. why is everyone coming to me for sex advice? Am I giving off a vibe? Uh, hey, Lewis, I need some advice from a guy. It's from a girl. Uh, the past few times my partner and I have had sex, he has not stayed hard and goes soft while we're doing it. 
This has not happened before, so I wanted an opinion from a guy. Is it something that I'm doing wrong, or does he just not enjoy it? I've asked him if he enjoys our sex, and he says that he does, and I have nothing to worry about. But I'm still confused, because don't you think if he enjoyed it, he would stay hard the whole time? It also appears that he's more turned on when he sends nudes to me than when we are in person. Please help. Yeah, this is this is a tough one, um, because... Uh, well, it's not something that I've experienced. Um, it's, uh, you know, you, men's sex drive, it, or anyone's sex drive, it varies, right? You know, when when I was uh, struggling during COVID, I had no drive. I didn't really want to do it. You know, not very much at, at, at all. I mean, when when we did, it was, you know, it's good, but I, it's just not something that I wanted to do a lot. Um, and, and and that had nothing to do with 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 my girl, it had more to do with, with how I was mentally and physically feeling. You know, I'm a very sick person and right now it's, it's fine, but you know, I think it, it, it definitely varies. I think that, um, I mean, I think that, yeah, the whole, the whole, uh, staying hard thing. Uh, I mean, not to get, not to get too graphic. It can depend on the, the session, like, that, like what you, what you're doing. Like if something goes for, for a really long time, yeah, sometimes it, it comes and goes. If you're if you're focusing on just you and and not on him, then then it can go away. I think that if uh, if if you are focusing on on him and, and and it's about that and and it should be working but it's not, then I think you should have a discussion about it because it could be um, it could be how physically healthy he is. It could be how mentally healthy he is. It could be him having a porn addiction. You know, I know that. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much totally off porn. I haven't I haven't really watched like I haven't watched it regular. I've watched it every now and then, but like it's literally like less than once a month. Uh and I'm completely off it. And and uh it didn't negatively affect me, but getting off it has positively affected me. If you know what I'm saying. Um but I know so many stories about dudes watching so much porn that when they're in real life they can't work it out or it doesn't work for them or, or they're desensitized or they need something crazy extra. Maybe he needs a detox from porn. Um, but it, what I'm saying is it could be so many different things. And I, and I think that it's, it's almost certainly not you like erectile dysfunction is, is almost never has anything to do with a woman, you know, unless you've, I mean, you could have been horribly disfigured in a car accident uh, I don't know, or, or you, or you could have, uh, you know, someone could have um, kidnapped you and 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 locked you in into like a faux gras like um, factory where they fatten up the ducks to create faux gras and 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 shoveled grain and butter down your throat until you put on three hundred kilos in about two months. I don't know, but but uh, ruling out that, I feel like you would have mentioned it if your if your physical appearance hasn't changed drastically in a really short time period. It's it's almost certainly not you, especially especially if he's like sexting you and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like like if 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 he was not attracted to you, he wouldn't do that. You know, like I'm not sending dick pics to a girl that I'm not attracted to, even if I'm in a, in a relationship with her. It's not something that I would do. It it's something that it's something that I would that that if I if if I was like so physically repulsed by someone that I couldn't get it up or I wasn't interested in having sex with them. You know, if I really, 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 really love them, I could. I, w- I reckon I could only maybe put it up with it in real life as a chore, and it wouldn't be fun. So it's not. It's not that. You know, and that's like a crazy scenario. So I would just have an honest conversation with your boyfriend about it. Like, why do you think this is happening? Because he would know. You know, uh, it could. It could also be drinking. It could also be drugs. You know, like if if you drink a lot, that's that's a negative side effect of of getting on the piss all the time. It could be, it's so many different things. Uh, and it's, and it's very, very, very unlikely to have anything to do with you. Um, it can be anxiety. It can be, it can be shit like, uh, you know, he has a big thing coming up and he's nervous about it and he's worried about it and it's taking him out of the moment and, and, and that's it. So yeah, I would, I, I, I the only answer is, is going to come from him. Um, and, and that's, that's my perspective as a guy is, is, uh, when these things happen, it, it almost has absolutely nothing to do uh, with you. I mean, also it could be his age. I don't know how old you are. If you guys are, if you're in your forties, like this could be a fairly normal thing, you know? Um, 
and and I would think that that if it's if it becomes like a, a real problem, and if he thinks it's a problem as well, he should see a doctor about it. How old is this person? She didn't say. And also, you said the past few times my partner and I have had sex, he hasn't stayed hard, and goes soft when we're doing it. Um, so yeah, it's like a recent thing. So has. Did someone die? You know, it could be so many different things uh, and, and it almost certainly has absolutely nothing to do with you. So the only thing to do instead of, you know, racking your mind is to have an open and honest conversation with him about it and be like, hey, these few this has happened the last few times we've done it. Am I doing something different? Is it about me? No. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. Why do you think it's happened? Um and also without emasculating him about it. Like, why can't you keep your dick hard, bitch? That's probably not the way to go about it. You know what I mean? Open and compassion. Um, anyway, that's probably where I'm going to end uh, the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Um, sorry, this one's coming up late on a Sunday. I was going to do it yesterday, but my uh, my mask wasn't on correctly. And then I slept for 14 hours um, during the day. And then, uh, and then I woke up for about three hours. And then last night I slept for 11 hours and I've, I woke up now at like uh, 2 p.m. and I just, it's, it's, what is it? What is it now? It's 7.30 p.m. and I just now felt just okay enough to do a podcast now because I'm very ill. Thank you for 400 uh, supporters on Patreon. The Patreon episode will be up tomorrow. I'll record it tomorrow uh, and uh, join it. Join the Discord, grab your tickets, loosebeers.com. The first show is on uh, Wednesday, I think, and I'm very excited for it and I hope you are too. It's going to be good. It's going to be different. It's going to be uh, fun and it's going to be nice, small, intimate crowds. I'm actually really looking forward to it. i got 23 shows. I hope to God I make it through all of them. Uh, I'm going to do my best. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you at the shows. Thank you. Brace yourself. Loosebeers.com. Uh, I hope you have a shit one. Bye.